Guys, Keith again with Bulletproof RC, and I'm back with you to share an update on my Axial Yeti kit. Uh, I've done a number of upgrades to this since the last video, and I thought I would share what I've done and my thoughts. Uh, first thing you'll notice is the tires are a little different. I ordered some uh, RC four-wheel drive rock crushers. Um, found a good deal on them from eBay, and uh, just a deal I couldn't pass up. And they were brand new, and I got them all. All four of them shipped for $35, and that just wasn't something I was going to let pass. I'm pretty impressed. I haven't run them yet because it's the weather's been bad here, but the the, the compound of rubber is, is super soft, and they're very aggressive. And I'm, I'm happy to try these because I was disappointed with the Proline uh, BF Goodrich tires, the KM2s that I had shown off in a previous video. The, the, here they are. I pulled these off those rims. I'm using the Deuces Wild foams inside here, by the way, the ones that I had inside here. And uh, maybe that's the problem. Maybe I'm using the closed cell foams. The foams were too too hard, and uh, the end result was um, without tire, the tire giving properly, maybe these tires, just the overall compound and everything was just too too hard. But I tried these on some, some mild trail running and, and crawling and some high-speed testing, and I just couldn't get them to hook up no matter where I was. Uh, for high-speed running, uh, the rear end would literally of uh, the vehicle would slide out from, uh, I would spin out. I, it just, I wouldn't get in proper traction with the front steering. Um, just, I was not happy. And then with crawling, they just, they everything would just fill up with mud, all these treads would fill up with mud and then it would just be a slick so anyway as you can see they are used i've got to clean them up a little bit uh but uh i'm not done trying these tires i'm going to try the foams that came out of the rc four-wheel drive tires because they are actually um they're a lot softer of course than the deuces wild and they're not ridiculous like the pro line let me get these to sit here for a second these are the foams that came with my Proline tires. Do you see that, guys? That is just absolutely ridiculous. The difference in size between what fits and what don't. I mean, these were crammed in those tires. Sorry about the cam work, guys. I'm working with one hand. These foams were crammed in these tires, believe it or not. And I just, just for fun, I tried uh, mining a beadlock on there and literally it, it would have been a chore to try to get a beadlock attached. But anyway, if you're buying Proline crawler tires, 2.2s, these are the foams you get. And I don't know of anybody that's using these. These are almost the same size as the foams in my Savage XL. Just an FYI. But I'm going to try these RC four wheel drive foams that came out of the Rock Crushers in the bf goodrich tires i have test fitted them and they have perfect fit and maybe that will give the tread enough give to where they have traction um on top of tires what i've done is um i'm gonna have to plug my battery up so i'm gonna pause the video plug the second. battery up and just want to show off the leds i did get them wired in these are 12 volt lights from uh ebay and uh, I chose 12 volts. Uh, they're, they're super bright. I chose the 12 volts because I'm running a 7.4 volt BEC in this rig. Now, uh, I may do a video one day to show how to straight wire a BEC to your servo because I actually, I did that with this, this vehicle. I don't have 7.4 volts running to my receiver because I'm running a FlySky receiver and Fly sky receiver is not capable of 7.4 volts as far as I'm aware. So uh, anyway, I've got the, the lights hardwired to the BEC as well. So when you turn the BEC on and off with its switch, the lights come on and off. And I also, also did get some rear lights going. Um, I don't know how happy I am with the outcome of the rear lights. Uh, I used red on the outside, 
and I used white lights in the middle and I tried using the axial yellow lenses and really the light, the LEDs were so bright that they basically they it didn't it didn't have the proper look that I was I was going for so what I did if I can I painted these lenses orange uh, with the paint I had left over from the body and uh, just to try to give it that um, realistic look uh, if you look online and you see uh, rock crawlers and short course trucks they have the red outside lights so I've got the red LEDs in here and they've got either yellow or orange lenses in the middle anyway I, I don't know if I'm gonna leave it like that or not but uh, so far I guess it's it's functional where's my switch at there it is anyway all in all I guess it'll do for now anyway I'll take the body off show you what Back else I've done. Uh, I went with a 10 shock motor um, this is a 3800 SC 401 and uh, I have to say wow on 3s with a 16 tooth stock pinion this thing rocks I mean <laughs> It, uh, it scoots around the yard and um, over any obstacle that I need to get over. It's got plenty of grunt on the lower end. Um, I, I haven't clocked it. I don't know how fast it is, but it's, it's plenty fast with the stock 16 tooth pinion. I was running this motor that I previously showed off. It was a, it's a third, let me get my thumb out of the way and turn it right side up. That's a 3100. Um, it's a Chinese motor. They have them on eBay. Uh, they're like $28 shipped. They come from California. And this is a great motor. It was it was plenty cool running a 3S LiPo with an 18-tooth pinion. And I was getting probably 35 miles an hour out of it. And um, you may be asking, why in the world you take this uh, motor out? Um, well, I ordered some pinion gears uh, you know, to try out. And ordered that 10 shock motor but I just decided to pull it out and give the 10 shock a, a chance and I, I really like the 10, 10 shock on the 16 tooth pinion and 3s uh, just overall it's just got it's got more power and um, and speed with the lower uh, pinion gear it's got the uh, grunt on the low end with the 3800 kV it's got the the uh, rpms on the high end so Anyway, I just think that's a better fit for this truck. What I may do is I may put this in my EXO. I'm currently running uh, a 2200 Leopard in it right now. And I think this the, the, the length of this can and everything, I think it'd be a better fit. The Leopard is a 72, uh, 72 millimeter can, I think, or 75 millimeter can. It's a long one, and it barely fits in there. Uh, also... When I ordered the Leopard, I ordered another one of these motors. This is actually a 2650, or excuse me, 2600. And it's a little bit shorter than the 3665, but it's a 3660. And um, I, I bought this originally planning to try it with 4S in the Yeti. And I still may try that down the road. But right now I'm going to continue to play around with the 10 shot 3800 because... I really like the way it performs. And I mentioned previously on the previous video that I put the Proline shocks. I did upgrade the shock oil. I had 30 weight in the front. I went with uh, 45 and then I also had a spring kit from Proline uh, and I used the firm springs on it. And that actually, I have my ground clearance the way I like it. And with the stiffer springs, it was a little bit more stable. Uh, I didn't have near, near as many rollovers. What was happening before is the front was giving around curves. And of course, your rear end has the uh, solid axle with the uh, sway bar in the rear. And you wasn't, I wasn't getting give back there in the rear when I go around the curves. It would get, get give on the, uh, the uh, outside wheel and it would roll over. But with the stiffer springs, it's more stable. It's uh, handling better with the extra weight of aluminum. Uh, it, it's, it's just really good now. I'm really happy with 45 weight and firm springs. In the rear end, I'm still running the 20 weight oil and the, the spr stock springs that come on the XT um, Proline shocks. And that's a, that's a good 
combination. I've got plenty of plenty of dampening and plenty of spring action, and uh, it, it's just it's just it's the way it ought to be. So anyway, guys, just wanted to give you guys an update. I think I went over everything. Uh, we'll show you the wiring. This is the BEC that I was telling you about. 7.4 uh, volts is what it's set to right now. And I just got a wire heading up to the front end and wired into those light buckets. I do have a disconnect right here in case I want to take the front bumper off. I don't have to disconnect the LEDs every time. And then what I did for the rear is um, I've just got a little Fataba style plug back here that plugs in to... Uh, a female one that I have on the body. I don't think you can see it there, maybe. But anyway, that's the wire and harness that I have in there. And then I just got the little plug there. I've got enough slack that if I want to use the body on the hinge, it's got plenty of room. That way I can hinge it up and then disconnect it and take the body completely off. But anyway, I'm very pleased with the outcome of the rig and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to for the weather to clear up and have some more fun with it and uh, go from there. It's an impressive rig. I'm very satisfied with it, guys. Have a good day.